as I opened in prayer, I went into a vision and I saw Jesus sitting on a chair and we were all sitting around him. And he looked at me and he said, tell me your stories. Genesis 26, 18 tells us, Isaac dug again the wells of Abraham. In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call, to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm your host, Gene Bailey. Listen, I am excited today. I know I say that every week, right? But I am excited today because, listen, if there's one person that we cover and we kind of keep coming back to time and time again, his connection to different revivalists through history is none other than Smith Wigglesworth. Well, today you've got a treat. I don't have Smith here, but I've got someone here that's got some exciting stories that you want to meet, his granddaughter, Lillian Defin. Lillian, thank you for being on today. Thank you, I'm Gene. excited. I'm I want excited to hear. I'm excited to be here, too. Yeah, this is good stuff. I want to hear all about your grandfather. At the turn of the 20th century, one man's message of faith transformed nations. Smith Wigglesworth entered the annals of revival history by simply making a decision. Time and again, he chose to reach out by faith to help hurting people. The result, God brought widespread healings and calls to repentance to many, which gave rise to a revival that literally spread across the world. His life choices released the Holy Spirit to work in his life and powerfully impacted 20th century believers. Over a hundred years later, his teachings are still transforming lives. Tell me about Switzerland. There's something in Switzerland. Right. I was in Switzerland in June and we were speaking to about 50 doctors. They asked me to open the conference. Now, this, this June, just recently. Yes, okay. yes. As I opened in prayer, I went into a vision and I saw Jesus sitting on a chair and we were all sitting around him. And he looked at me and he said, tell me your stories. So Jesus loves stories. He was a, a storyteller it. and he just set me free to be able to tell stories. Praise so while God. I was in Switzerland, I remembered that my, I call him grandpa because he was my mom's grandpa, right. but he's my great grandpa. Right. But in our house, we just called him grandpa. Right. So grandpa was in Switzerland and he was arrested and he was charged with healing without a license. Healing without a license. So many people were healed that they put him in prison and they said he was healing without a license. Well, the end of the story was that they, they let him go and they said he should leave the country and if he left uh, peacefully, he would be able to come back. He said, I just want, I have one request. Let me do one more meeting in the park. They said, you can, but you're not allowed to lay hands on anybody. Mm. And that's when God gave him the idea of wholesale healing mm. and retail oh, healing. Wow. So wholesale healing was when he just prayed over everybody and he said, as many got healed that way under the anointing of the Word of God as when it was retail healing, when he would lay hands on everybody one by one. And that's where we get that from today, even when you're on, on right. the platform, you're saying that. Yeah. Wow. And so the, their problem was that not that people were getting healed. I think that's interesting. It's not that people weren't getting healed. It's that people, he was healing without a license. That's right. They were quite upset about that. Yeah, I think the medical people were getting upset. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I bet they were. They were. But okay, so recently there's some else, and I don't know this story yet, and they're just giving me bait about Houston. So what happened in Houston? All right. I was invited to a church which uh, asked me to give my testimony, and part of the testimony was to tell them how I got healed of malaria. So right. just briefly, the story was we went to Mozambique. <clears throat> I came home and I had malaria. They had 
tried to treat me, but I wasn't responding to the treatment. So one day I got up early, lay on the couch, and I said, God, you have to touch me today because I'm not getting better, I'm getting worse. With that, I switched on the television, right. and it was 700 Club, right. and there was a word of knowledge, and uh, it was Pat Robertson, and he said, I see somebody, and you're shivering, and you're shaking, and you have a high temperature. He says, I think it's malaria. So I jumped off the couch. I said, that's me, that's me. And the anointing went through my head, right to through my feet, and I was instantly healed. And I was instantly strong. The amazing thing was that that word was given two years before I heard it. And, oh, and wow. Pat said, when he gave it, he thought to himself, this is a strange word for America. But God has our lives planned way before anything happens. He's got it all under control. So it took two years for that program to come to Africa and, and I heard it and I was healed. Well, I was telling this story and, and for some of the people in the audience, it was a little bit difficult for them to accept that you can be healed over a television. Right. So at the end of the service, I began to give some words of knowledge. And I, I began to say that there's somebody here and you, you have a heartache, but it's not a physical heartache. It's, it's a sorrow in mm. your heart that's making your heart right. ache. And a lady said the glory of God just touched her heart. And when that happened, her back was healed. Oh my goodness. Yes. And this was just last week. Yes, yes. Now, isn't it wonderful that God in His infinite, talk about a planner. Yes. <laughs> He's yes. such a planner. He planned for that program two years before you were in a place to see it, or for it to make its way finally to South Africa. And God's Word is so powerful and it, it doesn't get uh, weaker and weaker. Right. It, it's strong always. The same word that was given two years before was just as strong. Two years later when I heard it, God's Word is powerful. Okay. You know, there, there, there's one thing you need to understand. Those of you that maybe you've been a critic of Christian television, and, and we know that you guys are watching because we get little bits and pieces of comments here and there. This is a miracle, none, none lighter in importance than, than Jesus Himself standing here. When you get healed, you're healed. That's right. When you're healed, you're healed. And this is the whole purpose of uncovering wells of revival. It's not that we just sit here and talk about history and look at all this that happened and wasn't that cool. It's that we are talk, we're going back and showing you where God moved among His people and among the people in the world, not just the church, and things happened. Miracles happened. Healings happened. Salvations happened. Nations were changed. Cities were changed. God is an amazing God, isn't He? He is an amazing God. And He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still healing like He did. Oh, my the, goodness. All right, so tell me something that I don't know about Smith Wigglesworth. Um, this, this, many people ask me, what is the secret of His power? Right. People want to know that. And I, I have three points that I like to make. One of them is that the Word of God right. was all he ever read. And that was because he, he went to work when he was six years old. Right. You know, he tells a sweet story about, he used to say to his dad, six o'clock is so long in coming. And mm. his dad said, it will always come, son. It will always come. And uh, so he didn't learn to read and write, but then Grandma Polly taught him to read and write. So the only book he ever read was the Word of God. And we know how wow. faith comes. Yeah, faith hearing. comes by hearing and hearing yeah. by the Word of God. So, so it's the only book he read yes. was the Bible. And there are many books written about him and many books with his name on, but he didn't write them. Right. Other, other authors, other wrote, authors them. wrote them. And then secondly, he took communion every day. Every and day. he said it was an exchange of God's life for His life. Mm. So every day he, he did that. So he, had a keen, he was keenly aware, not just of the Scripture, but keenly aware of, of what you said, God's life for His life. That's right. And what's yeah. number three? Number three was he loved the Holy Spirit. And my dad told me that it didn't matter what subject he started on, 
he always finished with the Holy Spirit. Mm. So there was a, a man in a wheelchair and uh, so grandpa goes to him and says, you know, what's up? That's how he used to talk. What's right. up? What do you want? And he thought he would say, I want to be healed, but he didn't. He said, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, that thrilled Grandpa Wigglesworth. He laid hands on him. The man got filled with the Spirit and then leapt out of the wheelchair healed. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Powerful. okay. Yeah. So, number one, let's go through the, the three. Number one is re he only read the Bible. Right. Secret of his power. Number one, he only read the Bible. Number two was... Took communion. Took communion every day. Yeah. And sum up number three... Was, he, he was a man of the Spirit. Man of the Spirit, man of the Holy Loved Spirit. Loved the Holy Spirit. So tell me about the prophecy of 1939. Tell me about that. Right. He, he prophesied over Lester Summerall, and he prophesied that there would be three major moves of God. Right. He prophesied the healing revival, which took place just after the war. He prophesied the charismatic revival, which we know took place as well. And then he prophesied the word of faith revival. He said, I see people going to church with notebooks and pens. Right. So that was that one. But then he, he <coughs> said, there is coming the greatest. Imagine this, Gene. Yes. The greatest, greatest revival this world has ever seen. Praise God. And he said, in that revival, the gifts of the Spirit are going to be poured out. Oh. Yeah. Tell me about... I have so much to get through, I don't want to miss it, but tell me about George Jeffries and the connection with Smith Wigglesworth. All right. I have some letters here from <clears throat> George Jeffries. Oh, really? Okay. So they were good friends, and what I love about it, here, this is his handwriting here, which uh, I just love because it's so bold and uh, it's not a very good copy. But in this letter here, he's, he's talking about Amy McPherson, Oh, okay. that he had met right. her in the States and she had said, when you get back to England, please contact George Jeffries and tell him I'm coming to England. Oh, and, wow. uh, and, and, but this letter here, it, it's saying, he's saying, I have so many invitations. Hmm. Brother George, he called him, please could you take some of my invitations? Oh, wow. And I love that because just this working together of these two right. great men of God. Yes, wow, and then that? I have a letter here um, about, uh, it, it is to George Jeffries, but it's about Howard Carter and, and suggesting that Howard Carter would become mm -hmm. the, the principal of, of a Bible school. And, and of course, Howard Carter was probably of an age with, with, yeah. less, with um, Grandpa Wigglesworth and um, a mighty man of faith. So... He was in prison. You might have heard this story. Mm -hmm. when, they, when he was in prison, there was water dropping, dripping from the roof. Right. And he said, God, stop this water from dripping from the roof. And God said, you stop it. And so he said to the water, go back up. And it went back up and never came down again. Oh, my. That's the kind of faith this man That's had. That's wonderful. Praise God. Yes. I, mean, I hope this is lighting you up like it is me. The faith of these generals that have gone before us. Man, that's wonderful. Do you know, you know the timing of when that was? Was that uh, early 19? Well, it would have been during the war because that's why he was in prison. They called him a conscientious objector. Okay. So it was probably the Second World War um, okay. where he refused to, to go to war, so they put him in prison. And it was while he was <coughs> in prison that, that the Holy Spirit downloaded to him great revelation on the gifts of the Spirit. And this was really his message. Oh, really? And what were they? He, he was the one that the, the Lord showed him how the, there's nine gifts of the Spirit right. and that um, we can divide them into three sections, the revelation gifts, the power gifts, and the inspiration gifts. And okay. it was his teaching that we, we all still teach that today. Mm -hmm. And so... He, he, his, his main theme really, my dad also knew him, was concerning the gifts of the Spirit. Right. And it's interesting that we're talking about this and the greatest revival is, is at our doorstep. It's happening. And, and again, the gifts of the Spirit. 
gifts of the Spirit. Are going to be poured out. They make our lives so much easier. The gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen, it does. And it's visible to those around us. Yes. Tell me about, let's just talk about Smith the man and when it's something about shopping. And that's all I know to ask about Smith Wigglesworth and shopping. So tell me. You know, when God called him into ministry, he made a deal with God. He said, when I was a plumber, I always had good shoes and I had two good suits. And he said, God, if I'm in full-time ministry, I need good shoes and I want at least two good sho- uh, good suits in my cupboard. Right. And, and the Lord makes sure that that happened. But good he, shoes and two good suits. Yes. Yeah, that's great. He had a great heart for young ministers and he would love to go and take them shopping. Really? Mom said he, he would stand in the corner just weeping as as he told them, go and buy two good suits, go and buy some new shoes. And and these young pastors that couldn't afford it, he, he would weep because he could afford it, because he could do this for them. He could bless them with, wow. with new clothes. So he would actually take them out and do that for them. Yes, that was his great Praise delight. God. To, great delight. To dress young ministers. And he's investing in the kingdom when he was doing that. That's too. right. Man, oh yes, Lord. that's right. Tell me about the jewelry store. All right. When my mom turned 13, he, uh, Grandpa phoned her up and said, meet me at the jewelry store. Now, 13. Yes. Okay. All right. So she met him at the jewelry store. Her name was Alice. Mm-hmm. He had a daughter called Alice. but So she was named after his daughter. And uh, he said to her, choose any watch that you want. And she said she was just aware of the prices. She wasn't looking at the watches. She was aware of the prices because Grandma Polly had died Mm. and they had a housekeeper in the house who would do the cooking. And he, he, he would be a little upset with her if she was too extravagant with the food because he said that money should have gone to missions. And, and he would say, if you want to take a photograph of me, take it when I'm writing out a check to missions because that's when my face looks the happiest. Oh, wow. So he really had a heart for missionaries and giving to missions. And she was just aware of this, that you, you don't be extravagant. So she's looking around the shop and she finds the cheapest sh- watch in the shop. And he, he buys it for her. He said, are you sure this is the one? She said, yes, Grandpa. They, they get the watch, he goes outside, he looks at her and he says, Alice, I am very disappointed in you today. Mm. She says, why, Grandpa? He said, when God offers you a gift, choose the best. And my wow. mom lived by that all her life. Wow. She would choose the best and say, God will provide. Amen. Always lived by that. So she, she learned, choose the best. Seeing in, in Congo it was amazing because we were in the bush. But when we stopped for a picnic, she would bring out a table, white cloths, nice china. It was to teach us how to behave as well as three girls. But, right. but right. she would always say, choose the best. Always do it. Do, do the best you can in every do situation. Do the best you can. Mm. Wow, that's good. I, I know you're enjoying this. Let's keep going. Let's talk about your uh, your dad, Harold Berry and Smith Wigglesworth. Tell me about that. Right. He he was very ill once. He had wow. black water fever, which is a complication of malaria. And where we lived, there were no doctors, no hospitals. He was very ill, but God saw him through. But the mission board insisted that he go back to England. Hmm and that he had to have a checkup at at Harley Street with the doctors there because the the complication of black water fever was that the liver could be affected. Right. And they felt that he shouldn't be in Congo if it was something like that. So before, the day before he was going to have his medical, he went to see Grandpa Wigglesworth. and, And he said, this is the situation. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow and I need to make sure that my my liver is healed. And and Grandpa said, let's go for a walk in the park. Wow. And they went into the park and my dad said he took out his bottle of anointing oil 
and he started at his head and he anointed him all down his body. He said, until this great man of God was kneeling at his feet, anointing his feet. And he said he was so humbled with that. And he went the next day to Harley Street and of course he had a clean bill of health. He was perfectly well. He, he, my dad also used to tell us how he would go to visit grandpa sometimes. Yeah. And grandpa would say, come on in young man, sit down. And he would sit down and he would take out his New Testament, which he always had in his pocket. And he would begin to read. He would read for a few minutes and he would say, do you feel a little closer to Jesus? No. And my dad would say, yes, grandpa. And then he would read a bit. And then he would say, do you feel a little closer to Jesus? And this would go on for about 20 minutes. And then he would just look at my dad and say, you can go now, young man. How about that? And he had to leave. Wow. And you know, I, so I'm thinking about what you told me earlier about this is the only book he read. Right. And so he, he was reading the, not just the only book he read, the only book he chose to read. Yes. <clears throat> and so he's sitting there. This is what I'm seeing is this is a man just consumed with Jesus. Absolutely. Just consumed. There was no with chatter him. around him, Mom well, said. What, what about his private Bible studies? Did, tell me about some of those. Well, on a Wednesday night, he would have just the family hmm. and invite them to the home and he would teach them the Word of God, which it's a wonderful thing because we can be so consumed with getting the gospel to the world right. that maybe we <clears throat> neglect our own sons and daughters, grandchildren. Yeah. And so and every this... night he had this for the family. And, and mom said that the presence of God was so strong, so amazing. She would walk home the long way through the park because she didn't want to speak to anybody for a long right, time. Right. She didn't want to break that presence on her life. Well, wow, what a what a lesson there that he family. Yes. What good is your your religion if your own family yes. goes you know, to hell? My, my granny looked at my dad one day and he said, don't go and win the whole world for Jesus and see my grandchildren go to hell. Right. But he, they had learned from from Grandpa Wigglesworth. Mm. You, you give the word of God to your own kids. Right. Spend time with your own kids. Give them one night a week. Wow, oh, that's good. That's mm. good. Tell me about, there's a story about Jesus visiting your dad. What was that? Well, uh, dad was um, feeling that he was called to the Congo right. to go and minister there. And one day Jesus walked into the room and said to my dad, I will be round about you as a wall of fire. Mm. He said, I won't put a wall around you because walls can crumble like Jericho walls did. He said, I won't put a mountain around you because mountains can be walked over. He said, I won't put a fire around you because a fire can be quenched, but I myself will be a wall of fire oh, around about God. you. And dad had that prophecy over his life for 22 years and, you know, Things happened in the Congo and, sure. you know, life went on. But he, he often thought, why did he have such an encounter? Mm. He, he couldn't put it together until that War of Independence came in 1960. And my dad got caught twice by the freedom fighters and they surrounded his car. But every time, each time, they, they let him go. And he heard the Lord saying, I will be round about you as a wall of fire. As a wall of fire. Yes. Wow. What a tremendous heritage. Yeah. All right, here's the question I've been waiting to get to because I don't know the answer. And, and so tell me about being put in a lion's den. Right. I was just a little girl, yeah. maybe four years old. My, my dad said to us one day, we're going to a village that has never heard about Jesus. Right. And in those days, the, the children, when we got out of the car, the children would scream because they hadn't even seen a white face before. Right. So you must remember, this is many years ago. I'm, I'm talking 65 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So uh, the, they, we arrived that night 
And my dad said, is there somewhere where we can sleep? And they said, yes. They pointed to a, a it was four poles with a grass roof, just a little grass, grass covering. They said, and it was right in the middle of the village with all the huts around it. They said, you can sleep there for the night. Well, mom said she was just happy to have somewhere to put out the camp beds and get us all to bed. Right. And we'd just fallen asleep and a huge storm came. Thunder, lightning. Mom felt our lives were in danger. Mom and dad were standing up and rebuking the storm. Mom tells how she said, God, when Jesus was on earth, he stood in that boat and he rebuked the storm and the storm ceased. And we're saying, peace be still. And why is this storm not stopping? And it went all night. Mm. And then as the sun came up, everything was quiet again. Everything was peaceful. And the men of the village came out and said to my dad, we want to serve your God. He said, well, how do you know who my God is? They said, your God is the God that can save our children from the lions. They said, last night, we put you and your family in the lion's den. Oh, wow. They said, every night, the lions come and that's where they sleep. And sometimes our children get up and they forget and they run outside and the lions are eating our children. But they said, last night, your God sent a storm and the lions didn't come because of the lightning and the thunder. Your God protected your children from the storm. We want to know about the God who can take, protect our children from the lions, like your God protected your children from the lions last night. And the whole village came to Jesus. This is the right God. That is <laughs> the right God. This is the true God. This is the real God. Wow, an amazing story. How old were you at this point? I think I was, I was four or five. Four or five, okay. Um, I think my dad was just so excited because... <laughs> because you were still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, really, because, you know, we wondered how they were going to accept us. Yeah. And it was an overwhelming welcome. Yeah, the the, at day. that point it was, and, not the night before. And, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, just to be able to sit down and, and preach to those people, oh, wow. that was, of course, his Now heart. he had a ready-made audience that were ready to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, take this time to go to RevivalRadioTV.com and catch up on all of our past episodes, the ones you may have missed from the very beginning. We talked about the Welsh Revival, the KGB files that were uh, that we were able to discover and, and unseal, and that you'll be able to catch up on every show, everything that we've ever done. In fact, some special videos that are there. You go to RevivalRadioTV.com and watch all of the past episodes. You can also watch us on YouTube. Look for Revival Radio TV on YouTube and on Amazon Prime. Yes, on Amazon Prime, watch Revival Radio TV there as well. Don't forget, on the website, you've got the Revival Radio timeline, the history of revival. You can scroll through history and see what God did in every revival and how it applies to you.